everybody. Welcome to an episode of Coffee and Critique. Haven't done this in, uh, I don't know, maybe a year. Um, before I dive into it, I just want to let you guys know that our new 52 Frames Photo Workshop Tour is now open for business. Um, we are going to Tuscany, Italy. Just, I'm not even going to say anything about it. Just go to this website. I'll send you a link uh, at the bottom of this video in the description text. And I mean, yeah, just don't, don't even think about it. Just sign up. It's going to be incredible. It's a seven day trip. It's just amazing, amazing conditions to get beautiful blue hour photos of gorgeous quaint towns such as this and also that amazing morning mist as you can see here along with surprise guests and surprise activities and just all kinds of craziness welcoming the uh the sunrise early morning and seeing the sun uh, set in the evening just this amazingly beautiful magical place so go to the website sign up uh if the dates work for you we got nine spots left and i highly recommend it so let me uh, dive in. So what I'm doing here, and uh, you know what? I'm gonna uh, make a special announcement at the end of this video. So I wanna hold off on this train of thought and I'm just gonna dive into these, um, what looks like nine, uh, eight, wait, four, seven photos <laughs> that I've chosen. I'll give a little bit of a critique drop a little bit of my uh, knowledge bombs, whether they're knowledgeable or not, they are from my head and I hope you appreciate it. While it's not entirely fair this week because this challenge was edited by someone else, I'll try not to critique the edit so much, more so the photo, but I think it's helpful to just critique in general and I'll specify where I think something could have been improved. Okay, first photo. So I actually had to look at this for a while because I couldn't see what I think is a very important aspect of the photo. And that is uh, this this little bird here. You could barely see it even when I zoom in. We have here a bird that's a mama bird that's feeding uh, presumably her child. The problem here is that there is not enough separation from our a uh, co-subject of this child is just getting completely lost in the shadow. Uh, the way I would maybe um, improve this, I wouldn't really recommend this because this is very much in shadow, but just for uh, educational purposes, we'll see if I could brighten this up in, on a in a very extreme way. So now we can kind of see it a bit better. Um, obviously, I'm trying to like stretch out a raw file and not a I mean a JPEG and not a raw, so it's gonna start breaking down, but I would even go further and really bring down the exposure. I mean, essentially you want your subject or the thing that you want your viewers to look at. You want that to be bright and you want everything else to be less bright or you want that to be a certain color and everything else to be a different color. Or you want your subject to be in focus and everything else to be out of focus. So in this scenario here, what I've created is a, a little bit more of a contrast between your subject and the rest of the photo, which enables your photo, uh, your subject rather to pop. Now, why, why do I say it's not really fair? Because this is, um, I mean, maybe you can edit it this way. This actually doesn't look half bad even editing the uh, JPEG, but it's more in general when looking at a scene, you wanna make sure that when you're looking at it in camera before you ever bring it into something like Photoshop, that your subject is popping out, right? That your subject is clear either by exposure where it's more lit than the rest of the frame by focus where it's more in focus than the rest of the frame or like i said some kind of color contrast what could you have done differently here not much i mean you captured a beautiful moment here that you clearly couldn't set up somewhere else or even wait for like some kind of lighting conditions to change but that is my critique nonetheless let me just show you a before and after you see before here the light and dark is just kind of 
making my eyes dart all over the uh, frame. And here, although it's a bit heavily edited, the, my eye goes directly to the subject at hand. Coming up next, strawberry and blueberries. This is really a great photo. There's not much to critique. It could be a little bit soft over here in focus. You may have wanted your aperture to be a little bit wider. I'm seeing F8. Uh, that's actually, I mean shallow. That's actually pretty shallow. So when doing macro, really close up uh, photos, your aperture actually makes a huge difference. Your depth of field becomes super shallow, like super shallow. So if you are doing macro photography and you want everything to be in focus, you want to really get into that like crazy F18, F22 range. Uh, and for that, sometimes you even need some uh, specialized glass or you do something called focus stacking, which I'm not going to get into now. To my eye, this does seem a little bit soft in the front, but that's not a major critique. What I would critique though more heavily is that the exposure is just slightly less than ideal. If I were to just amp this exposure a smidgen, I'll turn on my highlight warnings here. We're still in the clear. For something like this with a beautiful white background for a high key look, you need to be careful to make it white. Don't make it too white. But I think it's quite subtle. Here's the before, here's the after. To me, the before, the whites just don't look quite white enough for this high key look. Here's the after, I just amped it up slightly and I think that makes a big difference. Um, here we have a beautiful shot of a flower. Again, it's getting a bit lost in the shadows, right? And when you look at this in your camera and you see this frame, you need to be asking yourself, you need to kind of analyze the whole scene. What am I seeing here? So, I mean, what I'm seeing here after, uh, after the fact is a whole lot of shadow on the left side of the frame, the, the bottom left, and then that whole top right area, I'm seeing a whole lot of light. The flowers are actually kind of in that mid-range. They're not super bright. They're not super dark. In fact, my eye actually comes first to this part of the photo because that's where more of the contrast is, that brighter area than the flowers itself. How to tweak this? Well, again, I would have tweaked this um, before, you know, while framing this, before even coming into Photoshop by simply taking a step to your left, just shifting the camera over a bit more to your left, and you would have had this darker background kind of shift over and disappear and just have the darker flowers contrasting with the brighter background. Not usually what you want, usually you want your subject to be brighter and the background darker. So. Perhaps if you took it from an angle more to your right, then that darker background could have overtaken the background and that would have created a more um, contrasting look. I mean, I could start playing with these sliders like I did before and it definitely would help. It would help it along. Let me just amp up the exposure here. Oh, that looks kind of nice. And I'll just make a new brush and... Oh man, you know what I could do? I could just like lower the exposure everywhere else and that'll that'll also make it pop and then finally I would raise the shadows here what I'm doing is I'm just trying to even out the the background oh, look at that that's not half bad and then once again a bit extreme but I'll just just for educational purposes pop out that flower uh, we're seeing the main subject now pop out what does that mean pop it means it has a brighter exposure than the rest of the image. It has a different kind of look than the rest of the image, which creates this contrast between the two so your eye can lock in right there. Here's the before, here's the after. You see, you actually, if you look at this before, after, I'll just toggle back and forth. Your eye actually naturally goes from the bright part of the image to the flower. <laughs> bright part, you could feel your eye just shifting focus. So, Again, it's not so much an editing t uh, critique, but rather when you're in front of the camera, these are the things you can look for. And if you don't see it, move around and see if you can manipulate the background to get that contrast in your shot. Holy schmoly, Manoli, baloney, Lynn. 
Jeez, Louise, this is freaking <laughs> unbelievable. This is crazy. So what I assume to be July 4th fireworks, uh, you had your camera on a tripod, you're getting a uh, very slow shutter. Let's see if you have EXIF here because we see the, the trails from the fireworks. No EXIF, Lynn. Where is your EXIF? Why must you hide this from me, Lynn? Come on, Lynn. Um, I would imagine this is uh, at least five seconds, maybe even 10 second territory. And <laughs> lightning struck twice. I mean, look at this. This is incredible. You got a, a strike, maybe one or two lightning strikes in your shot, which is by the way, how to shoot lightning. Same, uh, same concept, camera on a tripod, slow shutter, and try and expose for when the lightning comes into play. That that light will essentially expose your shot. This is this is superb. So I don't know. I would just I would maybe just amp the contrast a little bit, just raise the exposure a little bit. I feel like your these pops of light aren't quite light enough. And then also this a lot of a lot of black space at the top. Crop normal. Give me my cropping abilities so I would just I would just crop a little from the top but um yeah wow do we do before or after not really much to critique there that's just that's just freaking cool um so here we have sorry your name if your name isn't in the file name it's just oh, that much more difficult to call you out but PS Express I'll get better at figuring out your names so this is a really cool shot something I want to point out here is that keeping the rule of thirds in mind it's not my favorite rule but um if you are having a shallow focus right shallow depth of field then you probably want your focal point if you're focusing on just one aspect of the image to also fall on the rule of thirds intersecting points looking at it a little bit more carefully it does look like perhaps this area of the flag um, it does fall out close to one of the third points, um, but I don't know. I guess the focus for me is just a little bit lost. It's a very cool uh, blurred bokeh here. It's a very cool angle. I think perhaps if the focus was on one star or a little bit more clear or a little bit more um, either on the thirds or a little bit more in the frame, it would feel more balanced to me. It feels like the focus is kind of all the way at the edge here or over here on the flag, which isn't really bringing enough attention to my eye to understand like what what you want us to see per se, but it's it still works. It's a cool abstract and uh, I, I really like it. I like the vibe. Okay. This looks like, oh, edited by Candy. And then it says Beth Howbox. So uh, it could be Beth's AZ. A to Z. Would that be Beth? <laughs> A to Z. Okay. Whoever you are, again, I'm going to get better at the names. Um, this is a really cool image, and I appreciate the edit. I, I think it works in black and white. Um, if I'm being a little bit more nitpicky, I would say this could be a pretty classic case of not going in quite deep enough, meaning not zooming in quite enough to get like a bit more of an abstract close-up feel and not going back enough to see more of the scene. I feel like I'm just seeing a little bit of it, but not enough. But had you zoomed in on these spools of whatever, maybe that would be more interesting. Or had you just taken a step back, maybe that would have been more interesting. Which is hard to gauge, I think, when you're, you know, in real time looking at the camera uh, but you kind of have to think when somebody sees this picture, are they going to know what the heck they're looking at? Uh, are they getting the whole scene or rather are they getting the whole story? Um, I think this works on its own, but if I'm forced to critique, that's what I would say. And finally, we have, um, there's no name in the file name, but this I would say is actually a overexposed slightly, not a usual critique of mine. But I would lower this to a more realistic exposure. That looks nice. And uh, perhaps this is a critique for the editor rather than the shooter. 
Uh, and we'll take a brush and just kind of, that's a bit, that's a bit hot, but I'll lower that. Um, bring out the subject, which I assume is the little purple starfish there. Um, okay, so, I mean, that was a relatively quick critique on these amazing seven shots that I pulled out. A uh, quick announcement, why I picked these seven? Well, I'd like to introduce a new bonus tier that I just launched for our Patreon community at the $5 level. This used to be for the patrons at $15 a week, but for now, whether it's an upgrade from a previous tier or you're a new patron, if you join the $5 a week uh, bonus tier limited to 30, I will actually be giving you a critique on your photo every single week. So these are actually the first seven people to receive a critique. We have nine in the tier. We have 11 rather in the tier. So we have 11, we have 19 people left. We're gonna have 30 total and I'm gonna give a screencast just like this one every single week. So essentially five bucks to get a personal uh, critique video by yours truly, limited to 30. So uh, feel free, you're helping out the community. You're absolutely helping out this project. All this money is going straight to our website development. And you also join our uh, Patreon community where I give all kinds of weekly updates besides this video. Uh, in a series called Off the Rails, where I give you updates about the website, behind the scenes, updates on project goings on and website updates and photo critiques. So I encourage you anyways to join this community even for as little as a dollar a week. It makes a huge difference. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed this critique. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have no idea who I am, please go to 52frames.com to join our free weekly photography project. I'll see you guys next week. Happy shooting. Hi, my name is Yosef Adest, and I started 52 Frames back in 2011 as a personal passion project of mine for me and my friends to get better at photography through a guided weekly photo challenge. Little did I realize at just how much this would impact thousands of people from all over the world, literally changing the way they perceive their world. I can't count how many letters of gratitude I've received from people in the project thanking me for all that the project has done for them and for enabling a creative space in their otherwise busy lives. But for this year and beyond, I'd like to take this project to the next level. I have spent countless hours and my own money over the last five years in making this project something really special, which is why I'm now coming to you for support. I'd like to invite you to become a patron of 52 Frames. In order to keep this project running, from server costs, the emails I send out, the forms we use, it costs me hundreds of dollars every month. But for this year and beyond, I want to do even more. For those of you that know me, know that video is my passion. And I really want to devote more time to creating fun, educational, dynamic video that will help you, the photographer, become better at your craft. Becoming a patron is very simple. All you need to do is pledge any dollar amount each month and you will have full access to the 52 Frames Patreon page as well as your personal footing in making this project become something truly special. In addition to that, I have some exciting stretch goals and that's to hire developers to build a fully functional website, to host our rather large albums off of Facebook and introduce great functionality like follow, sort, and filter, not to mention the sponsorships and prizes we can give out with a proper budget. 52 Frames is and always will be free to participate. Please help me in continuing to offer this project to creatives around the world. Thank you so much for being a patron. Whether it's a dollar a week, a dollar a month, or just helping to spread out this message, I so much appreciate you helping and fulfilling my vision and spreading joy and creativity to the world. <laughs>